In the lab, Aspergillus is a very good model organism. Here you can see some Aspergillus cultures growing on an agar plate. This plate supplies the fungus with basic nutrients such as carbon and nitrogen sources, from which it can synthesize complex molecules, including proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, DNA, and RNA. In our lab, we are working with a saprophytic filamentous fungus called Aspergillus nidulans. In nature, it grows on decaying organic materials. To demonstrate this, we infected some fresh fruit and kept it under room temperature for a couple of days. In this time lapse, you can follow the fungus as it grows and spreads over the decaying fruit. With the help of a binocular, we can have a closer look at the fungus. With a magnification of 40 times, it is possible to see some special structures of the fungus. While growing under light conditions, this fungus produces asexual structures called conidiophores, which carry the asexual spores named conidia. Here is a scanning electron microscopy image of a conidiophore. Chains of conidia are produced from finger-like structures called phyllides. Accumulation of the green pigment makes them look green. Conidia spores are disseminated in nature. Incubation in darkness results in the formation of sexual structures called Cleistothesia. A Cleistothesium is a globose, completely closed fruiting body that contains sexually produced ascospores within sac-like structures called asci. A developing Cleistothesium is surrounded by a globose cell encasing whose function is to protect and nurture the growing Cleistothesium. Doing genetic research with this model organism, we work on common genetic questions. Genes act through the production of enzymes, with each gene responsible for producing a single enzyme that, in turn, affects a single step in a metabolic pathway. For Aspergillus, it fits very well, because the spore color of the fungus is produced in two steps. White compound is converted into yellow, which in turn is converted into final green compound. Mutants cannot convert one special color into another. For example, WA mutants accumulate white pigment and cannot convert white into yellow compound. Besides their importance as model organisms in genetics, a lot of fungi produce secondary metabolites. These can be antibiotics used in medicine as well as toxins which cause potent reactions in animals and humans when ingested. We generate different mutants of genes in our fungus. These mutants are grown on solid medium. We take some fresh material for further investigations. For sterilization, we dip a scalpel into ethanol and flame it. After the scalpel has cooled down, we can cut pieces out of the agar. These cutouts are sliced and transferred into a falcon tube. We can isolate the toxins from the fungus by adding water and then chloroform. The tubes are shaken on a machine like this. Chloroform is evaporated slowly and concentrated extracts are loaded onto TLC plates, which are visualized by spraying with aluminum chloride. After our TLC paper has been baked in an oven for a while, we put it into the TLC machine. 
This uses UVA light to illuminate the toxin proteins. With the help of a PC, we can analyze the luminescent bands. Furthermore, we use Aspergillus to work on the dynamics of some cellular proteins by using different types of fluorescent proteins. It is possible to make them visible by using a fluorescent or confocal microscope. By this method, scientists study the functions of the proteins by tracking the proteins within the cell and visualizing protein-protein interactions. For example, in these movies, greenish dots represent the two interacting kinase of proteins in comparison to the nuclei of the fungus visualized by red fluorescent protein. As you could see, Aspergillus is a versatile model organism that helps us to understand a lot of fundamental questions in molecular biology.